Uh, welcome to uh, the next talk. And we're going to discuss um, and talk about how to develop an Adobe Launch extension. Um, first off, thanks for having me and thanks for tuning in. So uh, let's start. First off, um, a little bit about myself. I'm Chris. I'm a front-end developer at DivaE, um, located in Munich, Germany. And uh, yeah, my main time, my main business, beside the normal uh, web development, um, is that I yeah, create uh, target activities, coding them, um, yeah, main business. So what is this about today? Uh, we will talk about, or in short, launch in general. What is it? What is the extensions that comes with it? Um, and of course, how the old construct of development and own extension is working. Uh, we will talk about some requirement tools, as, uh, some required tools and some items uh, that you need before you actually get into the whole developing thing. Um, we will create an easy launch extensions and with it, of course, the setup you need to do so. Um, and just in general, this talk is about providing a general understanding how this whole scenario is working and give you um, yeah, the most important information to probably one day start your own extension and develop it. So um, let's start. So first off, to get everyone on board, um, I want to quickly jump into the launch UI and explain and show you what this, uh, how it looks and where we are navigating in. So yeah, that we are in the same ship. So welcome to the uh, launch UI. I just will keep the short, but that where everyone is on the same track. Um, this is now the inside of one of my uh, one of the properties I created. On the left hand side, you have the main navigation. Um, you have some, yeah, the, the most important one. Everything that is launches about is the uh, rule creating stuff. So where you decide, okay, which uh, modules and which scripts are implemented on my uh, website. Um, I have some data elements. Data elements are like global variables that I can create inside my launch uh, property that I yeah, like can use in every extension or just declare them once, use them everywhere. Of course, I have the extension part. Um, I see there, okay, I have like already installed ones or those that I'm using. And beside that, I have a catalog that I can choose to install new. Um, extensions, probably some that I want to, of course, use in my website. So stuff like um, uh, the Adobe Audience Manager, um, a lot of uh, targeting and marketing stuff um, So that are already pre-built that I just can simply install to my project and use them within my rule set. Um, next, just to keep it like mentioned, uh, you have a, a publishing flow, different stages um, to push and test your like builds on. Um, as I said, different environment uh, environments, production, a development and a staging, of course. Um, for each of those, you get your own little script snippet that you simply push into your website um, and everything that is yeah, bundled up and built and pushed to those scripts and or to those environments is then available to your site. Beside that, there is like a host section, won't get into detail on this. Um, you can decide where this whole platform is launched, uh, hosted, and the little audit uh, events stuff, the basic thing. For us, important is uh, the rule set because this is everything that is launch, uh, that launches about, by the way launches the successor of the Adobe DTM. Um, to have that mentioned, um, yeah, launch is, as the most of you probably know, a tech management system and it's rule-based. It comes with, just have it as an example, uh, every rule that we create has following 
or has three steps that we need or that we can provide. It always starts with an event. So we tell launch, okay, something happened in our site or when does something happen? That can be something like a data layer push. This can be our page has loaded, the DOM content has loaded. Um, this can be the, the customer clicked on a button or whatever um, to yeah, actually start a rule. Then we can give our rule some conditions. In this case, um, the browser has to be a Chrome one so that our rule is actually saying, OK, um, now this needs to be given that our action that we, de um, that we define afterwards is actually firing. And then, of course, as I said, you have after the event has taken place and all the conditions were given, you can fire an action. Uh, in this case, it's a simple console, hello there, and I have a very prepared uh, simple test website. And yeah, with everything given, the uh, launch will fire the rule and print hello there in our console. So just to that, very important for us is the, the three steps because this is what our attention will focus on. Um, it's the events, the conditions, and the actions. Because just to give a little overview, uh, what is an extension at the end? So an extension is just expand our rule set and provides us some kind or some predefined uh, events actions and conditions that we just simply can use in our rule set. So for example, this is the um, Eocentrix extension we developed this year. And it comes with uh, yeah, a small configuration view. So a configuration view in this case is something that um, we will always like or will provide us the most use um, variables that we need inside our extension. And beside that, of course, we extend our rule set. So in this case, um, it offers an action that actually loads the user centric script into your website. And beside that, you can also define different others like events, conditions, or actions. So that said, um, or the most important thing is uh, when it comes to extension or extension developing is how do our extension uh, want to extend the the launch property with events conditions and actions all right that said let's jump to the next point where we want to speak in short about some tool and requirements um First off, before you start this, you want to have Node.js installed. I don't want to go into detail on how to install it, but there's like a pretty good documentation under the following link. Also posted it, uh, also written it in the presentation. You can get afterwards. Um, yeah, just make sure you have it installed. You need some know-how, of course, to, uh, to develop the whole thing. Um, at least JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. This is the basic to get the uh, basic setup going and to develop it. Of course, you need access to launch. And in the best case, you have some kind of dummy website. This can be your um, staging. This can be your Q&A website, whatever. So a pretty solid environment there you can test your extension on. Before we start, we want to make sure that we have prepared our environment. So what we want to do is actually create a new launch property. And this is one of the most, um, yeah, one of the things you actually have to provide. Um, when you create a new property, you get one of those little UIs. And on the in the advanced options, it asks you for uh, if the property should be configured for an extension development. And you will, of course, uh, check this mark. Um, on If you don't do that, or if you want to yeah, like develop an extension for an already ex existing property and it don't has the checkbox or the, the extension development configuration, uh, you won't be able to actually push new extensions to those properties. So make sure to have this one checked. Um, then, as I said, make sure that your um, 
dummy website or your staging or your test website actually has the uh, development environment script implemented on it so you're that launch is able to publish the builds you make to your uh, website there that you can test on it and then to actually have the credentials to push uh, via the um, scripts that we later see to your environment you want to make um, a service account on the adobe io slash console um, yeah simply need to be able to publish and share the extensions to the property you set up so let's get uh, right into it. i prepared a little um, example uh, in this case we will create an um, alert action or so we extend our launch ui within another action actually and there are some tools and the first of where we want to start with is of course with every other project you will start or need some kind of files you want to set up to actually write your code in and this is where the first little helper from adobe comes into the game um, and it's called the uh, scaffold tool and you simply uh, install it and run it uh, over the yeah shout and code for the from the node package manager it's called the reactor scaffold tool and this will set up like the first basic uh, file setup that we need for our extension so let's start this so this is like initially when you start one of those um, extensions it will ask you okay what what do you want your extension to be named in this case i want to have it called adapt to demo uh, the next thing is it asks us okay and which platform do you want to use your extension uh, you can have it on the mobile on the edge or in our case we want to run in a web environment and then it asks us like pretty standard questions do we want to start with a certain uh, version number in this in this case uh, the the one point zero is already fine we can some we can provide already some kind of uh, description um like let's just make test description so then we're good to go um of course we'd ask for an order in this case that's me and then there comes the important part and the thing that you can like reuse when you start the scaffold tool after you already did the initial thing the initial tasks um, it also what we want to do so we can we have the um, option to create new event types new condition types new action types uh, we can create new data elements to provide like global variables uh, we can like, create a shared module so that we can so we have the option to interact with uh, other extensions and get in touch with them and get those like sets and ver uh, variables from them um, yeah, we can add an icon path if we want to, um, and we can also ex uh, add an exchange URL. So in our case, we want to create an action, and it's simply selected. Um, and now we ask us, okay, how do you want to name your new ex uh, action? In this case, I simply will call it an alert action. Um, and then it will ask us, and this is another pretty important thing, um, it asks us for a view, or if you want to create a view or not so what is a view a view is always needed or is then needed if we need to uh, get some data from our uh, user or from the guys that are using our extension so everything that needs to be provided to actually make our script working and then we need additional data to actually like a name or a birth date or whatever uh, we will need a view to actually get those data into our extension. So in this case, yes, uh, we definitely want to have um, a view. And yeah, then it start, just starts again. I can now choose to uh, create another type, um, another event, another condition, whatever I like to. So in this case, we're actually fine with the um, one action we now have. So I'm going to cancel the task and jump over to 
my um, jump over to my, oh, actually I messed up because I didn't check done. Uh, sorry for that. Let's go for that. Test. Then we have one here. To type. Convert. Yes. And then make sure, <laughs> do the mistake that I did. Um, make sure you say, I'm done. And then it will um, create the, the file part for you. So let's jump into our uh, folder. So what did the um, scaffold to actually create for us. It created an extension JSON, uh, which holds basically uh, all the data we gave, gave the uh, scaffold to. You can also or, or always uh, redefine them. Um, we will get a template for our action. In this case, it's already named alert. Um, the, the, the alert uh, or the, the action template comes with a extension bridge and with some yeah, already set up HTML. So we can just simply put our stuff in it and use the whole thing as a template. And it comes with an, uh, yeah, JavaScript uh, file where we actually want to post or write in our uh, function. So just to repeat it. Um, so in view is also is always needed when we need to get some data from the client into our extension and the standard or the normal JavaScript files are needed to actually yeah, provide our logic logic or the the code that is our um, yeah extension should be running or our action should be running. So I prepared a little uh, I already prepared something. So in this case just want to paste it in. So in this case, I decided that our alert should have two input values, uh, a message, um, and yeah, I can give my uh, alert like a delay. So those are the two fields that the user needs to fill in to actually that our action is working. And on the lower part, there is the extension bridge. Uh, the extension bridge is actually the connector from our extension to the whole launch uh, instance. It will make sure to init our uh, values. It's like the setter um, that we're using. So if I have already data in our for our extension, of course, that I can reuse that um, so that I don't have to type it uh, every time on a new. Then we have a getter and then we have a validate functions. And of course, we'll make sure that all the data that we are actually needing is uh, there and is uh, yeah, valid. So I already prepared that as well. Just like this. All right. So what we're doing here is we say, okay, where do we get our uh, infos or from? We just simply say, okay, the message input field will the, get the information from the info.settings.message. And the same goes for the delay one. Then we tell it, okay, where do we, well, we set up the getter. Um, data get into get pushed to the, the launch property over uh, those two declarations. So message and delay, of course, go to the input fields value and the same case for the delay one and then we have some yeah like pretty simple uh, validation for it um, where the lengths have to be higher than now and it's uh, won't allow to be uh, undefined and if both values are given then our validation is actually true so nothing special just to uh, keep it easy all right so that we have set up our form uh, the next thing we will do, of course, we want to um, actually provide the script that our um, that our extension needs to like execute. So in this case, we fill a set timeout with uh, the delay that we already 
ask the user for and of course with the message. All right, so that we have the like initial action uh, alert action set up. The next thing that we want to do is of course we want to or we need some kind of testing. So in this case, there is another helper, and it's called the uh, Reactor Sandbox. Just to start that one up. So we get provided by two environments, one under HTTP and the other on HTTPS, uh, running on port 3000 and 4000. So let's jump into our sandbox. And there we are. Just to give you a quick uh, yeah, like instance or like a quick overview of our, what the sandbox is actually for, um, it will show us what we defined. So in this case, we defined an action, and it's called alert. It shows us how the, uh, the view, the UI, actually um, uh, is currently looking. And we get some, we get our init and get settings and validate functions from the extension bridge that we now can test here. So we can simply try to get the settings. In this case, message and delay will be an empty string and delay will be null. So we can make sure if we actually type something in, is the setter, uh, is the getter working? So in this case, for the message, it's working. And for the pop up or for the delay, Let's check the delay will also working. And we will see or we can make sure, OK, is our validation working? So in this case, if I press validate for now, it will make sure because we have both properties filled. If I remove one and try again, it will say, uh, OK, the result is false. There's something missing. Um, and actually, yeah, in the real launch UI, I won't be able to uh, save my, um, save my uh, action. So with this tested, you also get a little like yeah, copy paste of the real uh, launch environment where you can like define new rules. You can uh, yeah, like have some settings. Uh, you can uh, configure your extensions and then publish them to your iframe uh, dummy website inside the library sandbox um, where you can also test it. All right, so we made sure our action is actually working. So the next thing we want to do is uh, publish it or push it into our um, push it into our uh, environment. And before we do so, we need to pack the whole thing into a zip file. And there's another extension. Uh, there's another module that we just can use. It's called the Reactor Packager. Let's simply run that, and it tells us, "Okay, I created a zip file for you." By the way. Um, into inside the uh, reactor package, there's also a validation script. So it will actually tell you, okay, if there's like anything messed up. Um, yeah, so the reactor picture uh, will also make sure that this is working. So the next thing uh, we want to do is we want to use the credential that we created before over the Adobe uh, UI slash Kenzo. Um, to actually publish our or actually push our um, extension uh, or our extension library into to our development property. And for this, there is another tool. It's called the Adobe um, Reactor slash Uploader. And you simply pass some, yeah, you like your credentials. And then you can upload this thing into your library. All right. Um, it will tell us, okay, is this a zip file? Uh, is this, this I found one zip, and is this the one that you want to upload? Um, and I say, of course, yes. Then the extension is being processed. Now it tells us I get an ID. This is important for later, um, but it tells us, okay, we now have pushed it into our extension uh, in, in our, into our launch property. So let's have a check if it's already there. So I go into extensions, into catalog, and then I search for adapt. And there we have our extension. So I can now say, OK, install. And now it's installed to my UI or to my property. And inside um, my rule set, I can now declare another rule, test alert. 
uh, and then give it an event. In this case, I want to trigger it on the DOM ready event, saving that. And now say, okay, I have a new action and I want to choose it from the adapt to extension and the alert or the, the action that I want to try and fire uh, is the alert. And I simply say, okay, I give it some input. Now I say, okay, keep the changes. As you already see, it will fail um, because um, yeah, you didn't fulfill everything. Uh, keep the changes and now it will actually let us save it and now I'll be able to yeah, publish it to the, or add it to our publishing flow, um, push it to our test environment, and then we're good to go. So I need to hurry a little bit because I'm already over time. So the last step we wanna do is um, when we are like happy with our extension, uh, we need to change it or we actually need to tell Adobe, okay, hey, there's a new extension. I want to publish it to the public uh, catalog. And there's another um, package that we can use with the reactor releaser. It simply will yeah, switch a flag from private or from development to private. Um, just can simply use this as well. It will ask us um, for which, um, it will actually ask us uh, which instance we want to or which extension we want to switch on. So I hope this is working right now. Because else I would just move on to the next step. Okay, just to don't lose time. Um, when you did the release, uh, you will get another ID um, from the, the tool. Uh, just keep them like copy pasted somewhere because you will need them for the last step. So if you switched um, the the flag from your extension, um, you want to go to uh, the uh, yeah Adobe um, documentation, and there is a public release request form that you have, simply have to fill, and you fill in your developer info your extension info, there's the extension package ID that you need to provide. Um, you fill in some, yeah, like basic yes or no answers. And then you say finished, and then the request will be uh, provided or will be sent to Adobe. And then from there on, you will get an email um, when there's everything okay and everything validated. Then your extension is published to the public catalog. And this is how the basic uh, extension development is working. So some quick conclusion and learnings. Um, as you see, uh, there's a lot of, or mostly the, the easiest step can be uh, done with uh, tools and helpers also already provided by Adobe. Um, for me, I got that those tools are get updated frequently, um, just to keep in mind, Everything beside the standard JavaScript, CSS, HTML setup, like when you want to use a framework like React, it actually requires additional effort uh, in order to make the whole uh, extension working. Um, yeah, make sure whenever you want to publish something new to the catalog that you give it a new version number. I just ran into that problem a few times. Um, so yeah, just make sure. And the shared modules um, possibility, like really fun to uh, get those extensions connected um, between each other. So definitely have, if you're running or if you're planning to develop an extension, uh, have a look in this one as well. Okay, so because um, I'm a little bit over time, um, in the, the presentation or in the uh, ref or, or in the, the, the presentation you can download later. I also provided some references and links. So the, the best like yeah, websites to actually have a look on, uh, some series, some documentation, also some uh, uh, official uh, Adobe um, explanations where you can find all the NPM packages that I did use, um, yeah, some launch, um, 
text. And of course, if you're interested, um, some example open source example extensions that you just like could use to start your own extension. All right, and we're already over time. But anyhow, thanks um, for having the time and uh, for listening. And I hope you have. Um, we can like jump right into the um, question section. So actually, there is one. Um, to use an extension in production, does it need to be released to public, or can you keep it private? Um, no. So actually, you can use your own um, extensions, or you can also use your develop extensions on your own property. Um, the only thing you want to make the private adjustment or want to public push it publicly is when you, of course, want to share it with uh, with other people. So, but you're totally fine if you say, okay, we develop this extension for our own use. You're definitely good to go uh, without publishing to um, the public catalog. Hope this answers your question. Okay. Um, I guess so. If there's some questions afterwards, you can contact me via email uh, if you want to. So, again, thank you very much for listening and have a nice break.